Hi guys, Nina here. Welcome to my quilting live. Today is the 22nd of March and everybody's stuck inside. Nothing else better to do but quilt. Or make quilts. Or quilt the quilts. Or buying the quilts. Or well, anything to do with quilting. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you're new to my channel um, and you like what you uh, have watched, subscribe, like, and share them. And uh, yeah, so I'll just wait for everybody to get a notification. And come here. Obviously, I come on every time at five. You know, I forgot to grab the tablet. Hi, Ampy. I'm gonna take you guys for a field trip to my bedroom so that I can grab a tablet instead of sitting back. Um, ooh, it's dark in my room. All right, got me a tablet. Hi, Vicky. Okay. Hi, June. Hi, Kim. Hi, Diane. All right, I got myself a tablet. I had to go around to my room and get a tablet for those that are just joining. Because I totally didn't bring it with me. Hi, Anna. All right, let's get this one going. It's charged to 100%. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Uh, all right, let's see. Do -do -do my channel find me a video aha there it is okay and i have to turn it down too because it would probably be loud hi linda hi joe all right guys so as it says in the title of the video which is actually below the video um i'm going to put together some backing for a quilt that i did and if you're curious what quilt I'm backing, I will hold it up sort of and show you. And then this is what I'm backing it with. I have the yards and there's two pieces here. Hi, Elaine. So I'm going to have to most likely piece because the quilt that I am gonna quilt is, um, 88 by 101 so it is quite the large quilt if you guys remember it's my churn dash the big huge huge there we go get up open there we go here's a churn dash block <laughs> so this is the quilt that i'm quilting you guys probably remember because this actually was quilted in a time-lapsed video well now it's not going to go back the way it was oh shucks anyway so i need at least like nine and a quarter yards, I think. Um, I would use the little app for yardage, but it is on that phone that you guys are watching me from because this tablet does not get it because it's Apple and it's old because it's an older Apple pad. So it doesn't actually even get the app. So it's, there's an app, Robert Kaufman app that gets um for measurements for what you need for backing batting even borders and all sorts of stuff it's like a quilting calculator but anyway so i need to take this and turn it into backing for that so i know that i cannot take just two pieces of fabric and go down and make a center seam and call it a day which you could normally do with yardage i can't do that here because this number is 88 which is my smallest number so that means I am actually going to be turning this way and doing my seams sideways instead. I think we're going to go green and bear it and see what Smith is like, okay? okay? Love you. Love you. He's going to attempt the grocery store in this mass bad. panic of the world. All, all mad maxed out. <laughs> you know, Just to Gio, get some food because we shop every Sunday. Store, but I'm not allowed to go to the grocery store. In fact, I'm not allowed to do anything, and I think I told you guys this the other day. Uh, because I have MS and lots of medical problems, my doctor specifically called to say, do not go anywhere and do not come to the office. If you need me, call. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not allowed to leave the house, according to them. But I did yesterday. I went to a small gathering for uh, um, one of my good, good friends, and she had a gender reveal party. Yay, she's having a boy, just like I had guessed. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I did leave the house yesterday, but with a face mask on just to keep myself safe because even though everyone else is not sick, you know, because nobody's been even diagnosed around here in my, uh, the county I live in, um, even though everyone else wasn't sick, just to prevent myself from getting anything else because you guys know me, every time I go in public, I get sick. So I just wore a mask anyway, and I feel fine today. Normally I would feel horrible the next day, so I'm good. They all said hi, Scott. All right, let's see who else is here. Where was I? Uh, not really, but you can get a bag. All right, we got Jeanette, June, Elaine. Okay, I think that's where I was. Little B Cross, Sona, and that's it. Okay. Do, do, do. Everyone's just saying hi to each other. As of Tuesday, we will be under stay-at-home order. Our mayor issued one here to stay home and close businesses and so and don't go to bars and stuff like that. But last night when I was sitting outside and I told you guys this, I think either on here or, you know, separately, love you too, um, that from my house, I can hear one of the more popular bars in town um, at night. So if I go outside around 11 p.m. when I go out and smoke, I smoke on my back patio. I can hear the bar, the sound of the loud music. And sometimes like if they have bands or something and people are cheering, I can hear that too. So, and last night and the night before was loud. So I'm 100% sure that that bar is not closing just because everybody's in panic. People still want to get drunk, I guess. I have no idea. You could stay home and make a baby quilt for your friend. She watches this. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> um, let's see. Do things that make you happy. I do do things that make me happy. You should have not taken that chance. Or bars are, our bars are closed. Ours didn't close. Like, uh, Scott goes and does things. Um, the library did close and they're closed for three months. So that means <laughs> I should have got some books for the library because I wouldn't have had to return them for three months. <laughs> so if I need any of the quilting books that I usually get from the library, I guess I'm screwed for the next three months, but I have enough books here to keep me occupied. And then um, everywhere else in town, like uh, the bar was open today because uh, my husband's mom's um, husband, my mother-in-law's husband, she, he's in a band and they were playing down at that same bar today. So, um, parks are still open here because I think our mayor said, you know, cause we haven't had any cases. I think our mayor said that people should walk. You should, you should be outside walking. You should be letting the kids play outside, just no t in 10 feet range contact with other people and no big crowds. That's what ours issued. So anyway, yeah. Tis is life these days with uh, all this stuff going on. Anyway, <laughs> on to what I do best and that's sewing because really it is all I do best. Um, what was I going to say? I need to take this yardage here and turn it into a quilt backing. So I'm going to remove my rubber bands because my handy dandy rubber bands hold this down. Oh, how'd that happen? I don't know. And again, this is two pieces and I think they're six yards each. Let me pull my little tag. The reason why I keep the tags, six yard, yep, two pieces that are six yards each. Sorry, my phone is buzzing. Oh, okay, I can close that out then. Let me turn my buzzing off. That way you guys don't hear the zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pull this up here. Again, I need 88 by 101. So I'm going to do three seams, or I mean three, one, two, three pieces, and the middle piece will be the piece that I piece. Uh, 
That sounds funny. The middle will be the one with the seam in it. Hi, Teresa. It's crazy how people have... It's crazy how people have gone food crazy. Yeah, and Maxine works at a grocery store, my daughter. And um, she was say she came a little bit ago to drop something off. And she told Scott, hurry up and get to the store because they only have blah, 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 this. And she said that all canned goods are mainly gone. Um, all boxed foods are mainly gone. Toilet paper is scarce. Uh, paper towels, scarce. All that kind of stuff is scarce. But <coughs> excuse me. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, and she said, like things, you know, box goods like macaroni and cheese mixes and all this. And I'm thinking to myself, when you overstock on boxes of macaroni and cheese, boxes of cereal, boxes of any kind of grain product, you do realize all those boxes thrown together in a pantry will get weevils. I don't care if you have the perfectly spot cleaned house, whatever, you'll get weevils. So half of the food that everybody is buying is going to go bad unless you eat weevils. In that case, have at it. <laughs> but we've bought macaroni and cheese. We don't eat I mean, I eat macaroni and cheese and CJ eats and the girls eat it, but we don't eat it in an abundance ever. We don't eat it on a daily basis. So sometimes we'll buy a five pack of macaroni and cheese and it'll sit in the cupboard. And while I'm talking, I might as well take this off the bolt. It'll sit in the cupboard for like three months before we get to, you know, the final box of mac and cheese. And guess what? Soon as we dump it out, weevils every single time. I don't care. And we keep our house clean. So I don't care how clean people's houses are. Weevils get in food. So just watch how much you're buying. She said that the store actually is now putting a limit on how many things you can buy. And well, I just realized six yards is a whole lot. Oh, I finally got to a... a oh, it's still in there. I, no, is it still? Still? Okay. I finally got to the end of the first six yards. <clears throat> So now let's get the second six yards off of here. So yeah, all those kind of things are just going to get spoiled or go bad. I mean, canned goods obviously are good for at least a year, but do you really need to stock up on those things? Because now families that don't have it and don't have the money, but once every two weeks when they get their paychecks, there's none of it on the shelves for them, especially single mothers. And I know what it's like to be a single mother because I was for many years. They can't afford more than macaroni and cheese and canned good type stuff. So, you know, save that stuff, people. Save that stuff. I know you guys probably are not doing what I just explained. You know, the people and their craziness. But there are those out there that are. Okay. So, I have six yards here. And now I need a calculator because I am horrible with math. I need off of one part of six yards. Actually, I won't even have to have a seam because I need 80, 89, 90. Hold on, I got to put this math together in my head. I need four. I'm going to do three, four inches extra all the way around. Um, so 80, 89, 90, 91, 92. I'm going to go with 94 just to be on the safe side. 93, 94. So I need 94 inches one way. Let me write this down. Oh, here, there's a piece of paper I already cut. All right, so I'm thinking ahead. So I need 88, 9, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. 94 inches. That's three inches on each side of the quilt if I center it. And then I need in length 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107. And that'll just happen what happens happens because I'll always have excess from the bottom. So I need 94 inches off of this one. And I guess um, I'll count it out because it's almost 108, so it's almost three yards. <laughs> so I'm going to go like this. I'll turn you guys this way. Oops, you're not supposed to see that. That's secret project. Oh, well, who cares? <laughs> I'm not actually supposed to be showing that. Uh, 
All right, here we go. So there's one yard. And I can't see the comments at this very direction I'm in. Two yards. 36. 36. Okay, the one. Oh my goodness. Two. Carry the one. Three, six, seventy-six. Seventy-six. Eighty-six. Ninety-six. All right. I think I did that math correctly. Two and something amount yards. Trying to hold it where I uh, need it. Right here. So, yeah, I did it right. Um, I'm making quilt backing. We changed how we shop our meal plans and buy what we need. All those people with bidets actually have it good, man. Woo wee! You don't even need toilet paper. You just clean your bum every time. But I mean, who of us really have a bidet <laughs> in our house? <laughs> and I just lost my spot because of the funny thing about talking about a bidet. So I need two and a half yards again. <laughs> a little bit more than two and a half, actually, but 96 inches. Me too. A two right there. Okay. So past the stain, and now I'm gonna remember the number sixteen because that's about where it's at. Let's try this again. So I'm make a nice straight cut at least. Oh, at least attempt it. There we go. Now I need to do that again. I should have plenty of yardage for this. So there's one. All right, again, let's do this again. And straighten it out and right here. So I'm going to remember the number 19 because that's about where I need to cut. That way I have plenty of space. All right, so this is how much I have left from six yards. Now, I need to do this one more time. Just one more time though. So that's two pieces. Now, let's break up piece number three. And I don't see the comments, but I'm gonna look right now. change our plans and how we shop we plan our meals and buy what we need that's exactly what we do here that's why scott shops on sundays no i even passed up toilet paper because i didn't need it hi rowena uh, i am putting the backing together for a quilt uh celia hello um da -da -da -da. we have enough tp while i'm worried i will run out of dog food so if you don't hear from me for a week, you can assume I ran out. Uh, hi, Daniel. I ever want if I really need to enjoy difficulty live stream as a break from all the stress lately. Uh, I'm coping fine. I'm pretty sure everyone else is sort of. Some people can't leave their houses at all, though, which kind of sucks. Did the girl's mom get laid off? Nope. She's still going to work. They just went home. 
Same as usual. Same schedule as usual. Nothing has changed. She works at a country club. So um, the country club doesn't shut down because golfing, people can still golf. Why? Because golfing is what? Four people, three people get together and go golf. Sometimes only the one person goes and golf. So golfing has stayed open because you still have to have activities. So she works at the country club. So when the person comes in from golfing, they get a drink from just her. So there's there's no big, large groups where she lives, where she works. So that is why her job is still open and we still have the girls. If we didn't and didn't have a job, um, we would be screwed because we have no income. Um, it's a good thing we own our home because we have no income, but our other bills wouldn't be able to get paid. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, we do have somewhat income. I have social security because I'm disabled. All right. One. But we don't have an actual income for buying food and things like that. And anything like this, it's a good thing I got a bunch of fabric donated to me recently because yeah, I'm able to make a quilt back so that I could get this onto the long arm. Was that one? Yes, that was one. This is number two. Oh, yeah. I'm not even counting while I'm talking. All right, pull this over. And this is number three. We're going to cut this at the 29 right there. So I'm going to cut over on this side because I don't want to have to try to go that much further. All right. Line this up. Make a cut. There we go. So I should still have like three yards left of this for something else. Okay. Hi, Vicky. I have been told to stay home and only leave to go food shopping. You can exercise alone or walk the dog. It's a ghost town here. Dang. Yeah, they said here, same thing. I said it earlier that, you know, the mayor's letting, you know, he's encouraging walking, you know, take your family and your pets for walks, things like that, just not to engage in large groups. All right, so this is a needed piece. This is a not needed piece that can go back onto the bolt. So here should be three yards here. And then that little piece, which I'll just put that in my scraps. For now, I'm just going to fold it out of my way. All right, I'm going to give you guys the quickest, quickest sneak peek of my um, project that's on the side because I'm not allowed to record this one. Sometimes I get not allowed to record, so I'm not recording this one. So there it is. Can you see that? Sneak peek. That's quick, quick, quick. Yeah, because they, uh, the people that do this actually sub that um, asked for it, subscribe to my channel because they like watching my videos. <laughs> so, all right, let me pull all three of these up. <clears throat> okay. Do -do -do. And I'm uh, making masks for a local hospital. They are out and something is better than nothing. Awesome. You know, I know like five people locally here that sew and they're all making masks and there's tons more people probably that sew, but I know personally five people and they're all sewing masks. And one just asked me are you, if I'm sewing masks and I said, uh, no, only because um, I don't know why. <laughs> it's I kind of can't choose on somebody else's pattern. You know, there's so many different ways to make them. There's the split seam with the oval nose. Um, some people are saying, you know, just whatever, do it with this. Some people were complaining about what fabric to use, how many layers of fabric should I or shouldn't I make a pocket. And I'm thinking, well, I don't even have elastic anyway. <laughs> so... It would be kind of pointless because I don't have any elastic to even make any. And the stuff that I do have that I could use 
probably is the, the tie over the head kind like Jean True Love just posted hers. Um, she made it where you tie it around the neck and around the, the top around your head with a tie. I could make those because I actually have lots, a whole entire big box filled with um, uh, pre-made binding, you know, that you put buying a little package is uh, pre-made binding. I actually have a lot of that. But I would have to use the smaller ones and then I could just fold it over, I guess, and sew them. But um, I think that they want more convenient, uh, you know, slip it over your face instead of tying it up. I know that in surgery rooms they do, but these aren't even allowed once you make it out of cloth. It can't go into a surgical room. So it'd be pointless for me to make them surgical style with the tie around the head. And I know this because that's the kind the last doctor that operated on me used. So he had it hanging from his neck and then he pulled it up and, and tied the part around his head. So yeah, that's at least what we use here. But for the nurses and stuff. Uh, yeah, Vicki, I'm, I still have like this lingering cough. I don't have no other issues. I think it's just the, like the bronchitis kind of fused with my asthma and it's just knocking me out of breath. And no, I don't have the coronavirus, guys. No fever. I'm good. <laughs> no, I just, I think the last bronchitis really hit my asthma hard. So I've just been wheezing a lot. All right. Exactly. Exactly. What are, what are we saying exactly to Anna? My goodness. I just thought. Anyway, but I could, I mean, I could make even out of rubber bands. I have lots of these rubber bands, but I don't know if you want to put a rubber band around your ear because then it gets stuck in your hair and it makes a mess, very big mess. And <laughs> so I don't think I would do that either. <laughs> so I have options if I did want to make masks, but I'm not. So I have lots of friends and they're making like hundreds of them, hundreds. So I, I don't really need to chime in on that. All right, let's turn you guys this way. I'm going to sew. So how, pray tell, does one sew backing for all of you beginners? Um, I don't think I've done a real actual backing because I usually piece backing. Um, so for all the beginners that catch this video, backing is the easiest to make of all if you're just you know piecing fabric together and the most easiest way is to buy 108 but if you cannot find 108 in whatever you're looking for and or cannot afford it um backing out of yardage is quite simple there's two ways to do it there's a long seam that goes from top to bottom of the quilt you know when you load it on the frame and that's how i usually load it is my seam from top to bottom so that would mean when I do this, I would be doing it sideways because the other way to do it is to put the fabric one strip, two strip, three strip, depending on the length of your quilt. So this one I'm piecing together will be the equivalent of probably, uh, almost the equivalent of a 108 backing. Um, <coughs> uh, what was I going to say? So there's two pieces, there's two ways to do it. There's the two with the center seam. If, if your quilt isn't any bigger than say 75 inches, cause you still want a little bit of extra room. So if your quilt's width is under 75 inches and you're using your width of fabric, two pieces on the back gives you plenty of hangover. And then you just go with the length of the quilt in yardage. So whether that be two and a half, three yards, whatever. If your quilt is bigger than 80, which would be two, um, two uh, selvage to selvages, to be the equal length of two um, from end to end, and it's bigger than 80 inches because you only get that if your fabric is 44 inches and you take away your selvage and you sew a big seam allowance. You know, some people cut it off, some people don't. It just depends too for me to cut it off or leave it. Um, you're going to lose that. So if it's bigger than I say 80 inches, always you're going to need to piece it um, horizontally instead of vertically. So I will be doing two seams with this to make a three piece. And when I load it on the frame, I will be loading it sideways so that my seam goes from the back of the frame to the front of the frame purposely 
so that I have no pulling, sagging, or bowing, which is a very smart thing to do if you're a long armor, which I'll get to that when I get to long arming this. Um, so I'm just getting it done to start. Jeez, um, Tiff, I've been having a hacky cough all day. Huh, sorry, Vicky. What about using hair ties? I don't even have hair ties. This one and one more in my bedroom. I have a black one and this purple one. Those are the only hair ties I own. <laughs> and when they snap, I steal them from my daughters. <laughs> like the, I'll say, can I have a hair tie? You know, pretend I need to keep my hair up and then it becomes mine. I I'd actually don't use hair ties really. It's only up because I'm kind of sweaty. <laughs> do, 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 do. Where am I? I bet I ran through a dozen tutorials today on mass, making enough for the office. That should pro that's probably office, right? OFC. Uh, we'll probably have to make ties. I told that the elastics need is a little difficult to find. Yeah, that's what two of my friends were wondering if there was any elastic in town or if anybody had. That's the reason why they asked me is if I had any elastic or if I had purchased to make masks. And I said, I don't even have any elastic. Um, I have a couple fitted sheets out there that I could cut the elastic out of, but that's a long process because I use sheets to quilt, you know. Um, are you a flannel or regular backing? Uh, it all depends on the project. Uh, some people, like when I have customer quilts that I do, they want flannel on the back. Most baby quilts I put flannel on the back because it's nice and cuddly soft. Um, and or cuddle and or um, some kind of fleece. Uh, but big, huge quilts, I typically, this one, since it's 88 by 101, typically I would not put flannel on the back of a big, huge quilt like this because it's already heavy enough. Littler quilts, yes. So it's kind of one or the other, just depends on how big it is. So I have very little elastic, so I'm making mostly ties and in there i have flannel because it's soft but it gets hot too yes <clears throat> lasagna for dinner for ricky Ooh. um can't eat it. it used to be my favorite meal in the whole wide world was eating lasagna but now it's like once a year because it gives me the most horrible horrible stomach ache and acid because it's so much tomato sauce the girls went home, Teresa. Da, 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 da. Da. I'll be using rubber bands until I get my supply of elastic from my sister's stash. She is sending me. I might not be here too soon. Okay. All right. I'm going to pop this out of the way now and show you guys how I sew these. So three of them. I'm not even going to press or anything. I'm, what I'm going to do is take one of these. I'm going to use the selvage that's uh, marked. Like one side usually has writing on it and the other side does not. It's clear and so that I can see <clears throat> my line more clearly to do this. I'm actually going to put the selvage side here. And I should change my presser foot out because I'm not doing a quarter inch seam. I am doing like a half inch seam. Somewhere around that, however big the, um, uh, I just said it, the selvage. <laughs> however wide the selvage is, is how big my seam will be. All right, so now I'm going to grab another one. Let's put one aside for now. And now I'm going to grab that same exact side of selvage with writing on it. So here would be the side I want with the writing on it. See? So I have both the sides with the writing on it. Let's kind of straighten this up a little. And then here's the side with the writing on it. I'm going to put those sides with the writing on it right side together. This is so... um. This quilt, uh, this quilt, this uh, fabric is very, very, um, I call it like blotchy-like because there's no like equal 
matchups. You know, it, it wouldn't really matter if I matched anything up because if I put this right here next to this, like that, it's going to blend like super blend. So what I'm going to do is for even more super blending, it looks like if I come down, I don't want to do that either. I could line it up and super blend it right here. Now I'll hold this so that you can see what I mean by blending it. If I put those together like that, you see how that piece matches up, that piece matches up, the next one will match up and so on and so forth. I'm not even gonna bother with that. I think that's too much extra work and I don't wanna to have to trim everything when I'm finished, honestly. <laughs> I'm really lazy about this, but just know that you can line those up and literally have the perfect backing. If it wasn't so, if this was a different print, like a stripe or something, I definitely would line it up. If it was a um, solid, there's nothing to line up. Um, if it was a more lighter print, like say, unicorns facing one way obviously i'm going to line those up if it's uh snoopy and they're um one snoopy's head is up one snoopy's head is down throughout the whole thing so that it's reversible it's not just directional i would still line the snoopies up because if they don't then it would just take it would defeat the purpose but because this is so blotchy blended i don't think it's going to matter if it lines up or not so all right, let's put these two. Why is this selvage different than that selvage? Hmm, tell me that. I have no idea. Whatever, I'm putting them together. So I'm going to slide my hand down this, like so. And I'm holding that top. And I'm going to do this all from sitting down position. Why? Because I can. I'm going to come down, grab it some more. I want all this on my lap. Oh, and look, so this one is quite a bit longer, so I could actually line this up if I wanted. So I guess I'll just go ahead and do it. Why? Because you can. I could do whatever you want. I wasn't going to bother with it, but now I will. It's only coming down just ever so slightly anyway, like an inch. Put it in front of me. I'm also going to turn this so I can see comments. Blocking, blocking the screen, guys. What size needle and stitch length do I use and prefer? Stitch length wise for backing or for just any piecing period? Um, backing stitches, I tend to do quite a bit tinier than I do piecing stitches for like the top. Um, so I will probably change this to about 2.1 or just 2, just leave it on a 2. Um, when I'm piecing blocks, I usually piece them 2.3, 2.4, somewhere around there. And when I'm putting on binding, I have a stitch length of 3 or bigger because it looks like 10 stitches per inch, which is what I quilt in. Um, unless I'm doing some kind of like micro quilting, then I have to use a smaller stitch. But that we'll get to with quilting related stuff later. Um, and let's see. And needle, I have a 9014 in here. I tend to stick with those because they go with almost anything, which is, you know, easy because I don't have to change my needle for every single project. And I am honestly, and I've told you guys this before, my needle's still sharp. Still sharp. I don't really change my needles that often. Um, now, client quilt wise, I will because they get charged for it. So I'll put a new one in to start their project. Um, and when I do boutiques, I usually put a new one in as well because it, it won't be a dull piercing, if that makes any sense. It'll pierce nice and, and um, tightly, which is good. So, all right, where was that? Let's put it right there. So yeah, I use the 9014, typically stitch length, whatever. Um, 
and this is backing so it's always tighter and it's just one little tiny turn oh, by the way beautiful backing fabric thank you it was in one of the uh not the last box that was donated to me but um uh somebody else a secret person donated some stuff to me and i showed it in the video the same day i think i got my um uh creative notions box was the same day i got all this stuff donated to me going past a lot fix my roof oh sorry vicky um that is what i use a 14. yeah i've always used it i don't change to a six sometimes i change to a 16 uh when i do um like different other things when i'm sewing other things but i never sew other things quilting wise i always use the same thing so all right i am going to because i'm keeping the selvage here i'm going to stitch on this whole backing a quarter inch away from the line that is created from the um because there is a nice beautiful line for me to follow i can't stitch straight you guys know this i'm going to stitch a quarter inch away from that line on my backing and the only way i will remove this backing or these selvages probably would be because it shows through but i don't think it's going to show through we'll see sometimes they do sometimes they are um really 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 like showing through all right so i'm gonna start right here i always back stitch and i just totally did the whole opposite of what i was saying all right and now i'm just going to follow this completely all the way down i'm also going to clean up all the threads that i picked up off the floor because i have carpet and it picks everything up but today's vacuuming day, so it's cool. <laughs> Vacuum later. All right. So now I'm just going to zoom down this. Um, I think I'm going to put my comments back there to make it easier. Okay, you guys are just talking. I also try to make sure that everything is nice and flat under here, not too bunched, because then I end up getting a fold. I have accidentally sewn a fold from a piece of fabric underneath in the way. So I learn from my mistakes. Oh, this is all I'm doing, guys. And just for video sake, oh, I can't reach it. Can you see? I'm stitching a quarter inch away. You can see that, right? Stitching a quarter inch away. There's my stitch line. Yeah, you can't see that. Let's bring the camera this way. Hi, guys. See? Quarter inch away from this line that is on the selvage. Why? Because that is a pretty darn straight line. And again, here's my really, really, really tight stitches. Can you see those? Sometimes I leave this, sometimes I don't, and I'll just press it open. So this is how I stitch it, though. I'm going to turn this back around, though, because you really don't need to watch that, because most of you guys know how this is. And if you watch from far, it's not really hard to um, learn this. This is one of the easier steps, like I said. It looks like they're still lining up, but we'll see. To be done. I 
this kid has got to go. Okay, Ricky. We'll see you next time. Some people sew a half an inch away from the um from the selvage. Some people cut it away. I sometimes cut it away if when I press it open if it's too um messed up and I can see through it. I don't like being able to see through it. Lord just signed off. Oh sorry I didn't see that Linda. I, I go live at five no matter what anyway on Sundays. So anybody else that we watch that knows that watch me know that Sundays is at five is when I come on. So I don't like to put it off if someone else is on because it is the time I always go on. So just to keep my um, what is the word for it? I don't even know. My consistency, you know, <laughs> that's it. You'll probably notice that I'm on too. I used to not go on when someone else was live, but this was before I had a thousand subscribers or more. And that and before a lot of other people I subscribed to started coming over to my channel too, you know, I tried to be, I tried to be respectful of other people's lives, but we all have different like regular days. Becca has Friday. I have Sunday. So, I mean, anything else is just random. It would be. Oh. And I'm out of bobbin because I was using this earlier. That's the only reason why. That's my inhaler. If you were wondering what I just threw up here. It was in the way of my bobbins. Bye. Shaking isn't as bad today because I took a nap. <laughs> but as soon as that nap wears off, the shaking comes back. <laughs> I know. Sounds weird, right? My body. <sighs> All right. I always start on that same line I ended about an inch away from it. For those that are curious, when I run out of bobbin, what I do. <laughs> Now he's back stitch too. Well, obviously there was no toilet paper. <laughs> there was none of your chips. No. The cheap chips were all out. Everything in the frozen thing was pretty much all gone. Um, Does everybody have extra freezers? So yeah, for no all pot this? pies for you. <laughs> they had one, the Boston Market ones that you like. They still had a couple of the uh, uh, the stuff for the steak, the meatloaf. <laughs> Meat was all gone, obviously, and rice and Scott's rice mixes. Scott's back from the store, telling me everything that the store is out of. There's uh, no one mixing stuff. Actually, they one box, so I grabbed four of those. So if we have to do that again this week. We'll just do that. Okay. They had cheese and bean frozen burritos, but somebody doesn't like those. So I was like, well, then you're not going to have any next week if you're going to be picky. So, yeah, he didn't want those. Is he not going to go up to the school for the free school meal? He should. All right, one done, guys. He should. That'll give him breakfast and lunch, you now, know. Now, I'm going to go back up to the top. Do you hear me? Yes. Because now I have two together. So there's, I have now, I should have around 80 inches. So now I'm going to do this again because I'm going to 100 and something. So I'm going to lay this down. And there is one of those like store things in here. <laughs> I'm not going to use my snoops on it because those are for fabric only. 
weird for that to be on fabric, but okay. All right, so oh, I'll lay no this bread down. whatsoever, either. It was as empty as the toilet paper. None. Not a one type of bread of any kind. No hot dog buns, no hamburger buns, nothing. 100% out. They did have all the fruit, though. All the fruit was there. And so. we don't have ingredients to make bread, either. All right, number three is being added. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find where, if it is close. Mm, I guess right right here so a little bit up I'm gonna do this all over again okay nice and flat and I'm gonna sew the same thing except this time I already started sewing it and now I'm gonna line it all up onto my lap So that it's nice and together. I guess I can look at comments while I'm at this part. Go down it. Down it. I'll pop in here from time to time. Becca was stir crazy. That's why she went live. Oh, from being inside. I don't really care if other people go alive at the same time it just kind of sucks because we have the same subscribers so i mean i sometimes because t quilts comes on live at the same time as another channel that i watch so i watch both actually t quilts comes on at the same time as uh yvette renee <laughs> so i usually watch both at the same time um but yvette's not doing live streaming right now so um, I don't have two to watch at the same time, but I'll pull one up. If my phone and tablet are both charged, I'll watch them both <laughs> at the same time. Scott's like, will you turn one of those down? So one, I'll read the comments consistently and the other one I'll listen to and then read comments. If something that is said <laughs> is in the need of a comment, it's kind of funny. Be good. Tiffany, I'm eating peeps because of your shirt. <laughs> awesome, Anna. I know this shirt is quite cute. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five shirts to choose from now. So now I just grab one and then wear it the, the length of time that I'm quilting. I don't use it for anything but quilting because I don't want them to get ruined. And since I do have a YouTube channel and I need to be able to change out, I'm like, I'll just choose one, put it on. When I'm done quilting, I'll hang it up. Unless I get super duper sweaty or I forget to take it off. That's the only reason it gets washed. And then once a week, whatever one I wore the most of the week or two, then I'll throw those in my laundry when Scott does my laundry. So for now, I just wear them and that all my shirts get take turns. <laughs> so today, this is the one that I grabbed. I was reading some of people on Facebook because I, you know, read stuff anywhere and everywhere on the internet. And I was on Facebook which I haven't been on much lately because it's nothing but, you know, it's just nothing but this coronavirus, everything coronavirus. I did post something about it, but pretty much to localize to people that live where I live. Anyway, um, I was reading and people are saying, well, this sucks that we have to stay in because no more Easter. Excuse me? How could you not have Easter? Uh, they're still selling candy at the stores for Easter, which are the aisles that actually have something in it. Secondly, um, Easter is celebrated whether you are poor, rich, can't leave home, uh, you know, living on a boat. You, no matter where you are in the world, you still celebrate Easter. And if you want to do it with family, 
well then have your close if your close family can be there and they live down the street like ours does or they live in you know the next town over they can still come over if they're not sick right so you really can't say oh we can't have easter because of the coronavirus you still can have easter you can still cook up something because i doubt there's ham at the store or whatever else people cook for easter but still you can still have a good Easter and kids can still have a good Easter. Why? Because that stuff is still at the grocery stores. And I have this like really long string I just felt. <laughs> so yeah, I was reading things and people were complaining about that. People were complaining, oh, they can't go anywhere and do anything or they can't leave their house. And not like what you guys are saying. Like some were saying they can't leave their house at all 100 percent can't leave their house because um some people you know they have no money you know they can't work so they have no money from working and they can't leave the house because of it and they have lots of kids so they're worried that you know leaving their house with the kids is going to be a bad thing because their kids are susceptible to getting sicker more sicker than they would so that there's people saying stuff like that and there's just all sorts of stuff and it's kind of depressing honestly I did say you can't step out your front door. I think that's what people are thinking, you know, that the government is saying you can't step out your front door even, you know. And if you are 100% healthy, you could even travel to places that there isn't lots of people. As long as it's you in your car with your family that is not sick, you can go see the Grand Canyon because you there's nobody else at the Grand Canyon. You know, and gas right now is like way low. I don't know if you guys noticed, but gas prices have gone down. So, you can still go and do things as long as you're not in large groups of people and you're not exposing yourself to large groups of people, which would be going to the grocery store. <laughs> so, things like that. I don't know. We're just thinking, my brain is thinking out loud. And talking out loud but yeah I've, I've been seeing some just crazy things and another thing there is lots and lots of memes a meme is a picture of something with a saying to go with it there are lots of them especially about toilet paper <laughs> the toilet paper ones are kind of funny though and there are also now I don't know if you guys watch uh there's like this really hillbilly guy that does videos and and there's another really redneck hillbilly guy that does videos and they both have posted videos about the coronavirus. The pun guys did a video about the coronavirus, you know, their puns about the coronavirus. <laughs> so some of those are really funny, you know, I mean, you got to have humor if you're stuck at home. You can't sit at home and get depressed because that's one thing that's going to happen is a lot of people are going to get depressed because they can't go do anything, you know. So reading and seeing stuff like that keeps you from getting depressed you know and then for us we have quilting so we shouldn't get depressed and sad and lonely because no matter what you just turn on the internet you know the youtube and bam you have me and how many other quilter people that we watch so there's no getting bored and depressed and sad and lonely because we are still here that's the cool part about being an online YouTube creator because I love doing this and I do it from home. I'm not a, a out. A lot of some YouTube creators are outdoor creators that they create things and they can't do some of the things. You know, some are cook. They cook and prep and a lot of them aren't cooking and prepping. I've watched cook and prep videos because uh, the cook and prep ones can't find the food they need to cook and prep. So... There's those kind of videos, but the ones that make bread, there's a couple bread making videos. I just don't have the ingredients to make bread and the store doesn't have them. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have a bread thing either, but there is a crock pot recipe that I wanted to try on making bread in a crock pot. Crock pot. And I have a crock pot, so I could make bread in a crock pot. If I had the ingredients. Lots and lots of just things we can do from home. A lot of us end up on the internet, though. I'm guilty of it. <laughs> we 
watch a lot of Netflix and Hulu and whatever movies. Can't go to the library now, so we can't rent movies from the library. And the ones we do have from the library, we have for the next 60 days because the library is closed. Ooh, look, I'm almost to the bottom. And this one is way short. I hope I have enough there. I'm going to bring this up here while I finish the last of this seam. Um, okay, hold on. That goes with stir crazy. Maps can be good. Same thing in Florida. Any peeps? Okay, I saw that. That just reminded me of I have jelly beans in my car. Yum. I like jelly beans. Some people don't like jelly beans. I like jelly beans. I don't like the, the funky library? flavored ones. Oh, I was just talking about everything. Everything in general. You gotta find things to talk about. Mm. That doesn't have to always be cooking with it. Oh, oh yeah, ours months. is shut down. All right, well, we got movies that we wanted to watch for her. <laughs> I know we were on a we were watching all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. <gasps> so let's see, where were we at? Okay, Jelly Beans in the car, grocery store, tons of people. Like I said, yes, the grocery stores have tons of candy. Even ours does. Scott said that's the empty mm -hmm. style. The empty people, nobody goes in that aisle. The empty. Easter candy aisle is 100% empty. The other week when I was there and it was packed oh, it was with people. Empty? Huh? I thought you said it was full. No, it was empty of people. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I was saying. I went there Monday morning and there were so many people you couldn't walk through the store with a cart. So I left my cart in that aisle. That was the only empty aisle. The Easter candy aisle. Not the, They have a regular candy aisle and they have an Ever Easter area. tried turmeric tea or golden milk? It, it's recommended for a host of illnesses, but if you're taking meds, check with your pharmacist first. Supposed to be great for immune system and arthritis. Um, I've tried turmeric for things, but I've never heard of golden milk before. Uh, but if you won't eat frozen burritos. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Hi, Pamela. Let's see. Turmeric is great for our other meds. Do, do, do. I'm just going to skip through the ones that say hi. Uh, my teaspoon found three good recipes in YouTube. Do you that's a Kim? Does spam go well with beans and onions? My instant pot pressure cooker can cook beans very done in 120 minutes. I have plenty of time at home to cook. Um, what world are you, you people can, growing up in? When I was a kid, spam, spam went with anything. With anything. Has that got anything in it? This? Yeah. Like what? What do you mean? Is there food in there? Yeah. Like enough to see? I guess. Why? This is what Scott's concoctions are. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys. He just makes what you call goulash with rice and barley and beans and vegetables. all sorts of vegetables. Lots of vegetables. And gra you mix gravy, right? I think he uses gravy it depends. or something so, like that. Sometimes we can sometimes get gravy, Sometimes I sometimes make a uh, barbecue he eats spaghetti sauce All day mix. long. He makes concoctions, I call them. And everybody's leftovers. Anything that we don't eat, he eats. It goes in my mix. That he just dumps it all into a big bowl and eats Roman it. gladiator <laughs> diet was beans and barley, so he I said, added to the Roman gladiator diet. Said, I add lots of vegetables. He said that it goes in the same way as it comes out. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You don't have. I'm a separator. I can't have my beans touching my chicken, touching my corn. You know what I mean? I can't do that. So. What you know, that kind of thing. I can have it touching. And if we and had spam, just, it'd be in there because spam goes with everything. Anything. So, yes, you can mix spam and onions and beans. If he can do it, you can do it. <laughs> um, let's see. I heard of the correct amount of black pepper. The pill probably has the red pen. I don't usually eat spam, but they're fully stocked in my local small corner food store. Hi, Shirley. I to meet everyone. Thank you for sharing your personal life and teaching us through your love for quilting. Love video. Live videos, although we are alone, you make us feel like we are not. Aw, I'm here to just keep the smiles on everyone's face and learn something new. So for beginners, you just learned how to piece backing, which now I got to plug an iron in and um, press real quick. <laughs> oh, I love jelly beans. Uh, the bread making videos are the reason for the shortage of flour and Greek yogurt. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. I plan to stop after work tomorrow. See if I can get fresh turmeric. If not, I will try the pills. Tiffany, do you like black jelly beans? Ew, no. 
I don't like black licorice, so therefore I don't like black jelly beans. But there is a dark purple jelly bean that's grape, and that's okay. But it looks black, but it's actually dark purple. <laughs> um, tried turmeric and it didn't seem to help, but I have psoriatic arthritis. It may work on another type. <clears throat> Grew up with spam. <laughs> I also like black beans. Kind of want to tell you the recipes talk about black peep. All right, let's plug this iron in. I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to move the quilt. And throw it over there in the pile. One thing our Smiths does have in stock is pretzels and peanut butter. Oh, yeah. That's also and another Scott great eats one. Pretzels and peanut butter all the time, too. For those of that are curious, plenty of carbs and protein. On things that you can have with carbs and protein, and, and it's a good snack. He gets pretzels Healthy. and peanut butter all the time. They didn't have his pretzels for weeks either. He was nope. like really, really mad. Because they had tons of pretzels today, though. No <laughs> chips, but tons of pretzels. He eats pretzels like they're going out of style, let me tell you. I can't eat too many pretzels. I do eat them, I love them. They're good. I can't eat too many. They give me the hiccups. Like the weirdest thing, pretzels give me the hiccups and popcorn gives me the hiccups. Strange, random things. All right. I'm going to pull this away from the wall because what I'm going to do is take you guys over here now. Well, maybe take you over here. Do you want me to read comments from over here? If you would, please, I'm going to put this well, I'm in here. I'm in about here. right here, Reading is easy. tip you guys down, and show you how this seam splitting open thing works, so you can see right here. I have the iron getting warm. What I'm going to do, because I have a big ironing board, but this works the same on small ironing boards, because I used to iron on a small board only. I'm talking about eggs and spam, they're going to make me more hungry than I already am. All right, we're going to start with this seam right here. So I'm going to pull everyone. it up like so. You want to put the seam at or on your ironing board so that you can down. press it open. Sorry. Yeah, I gave him a sneak peek that I'm, okay. not, I'm not allowed to show it. Okay. So they got a sneak quick peek. Okay. okay, so here's how this works. For those that do not know, and I probably need more light right here, huh? You see better? Look at that. You see better. I have light for both sides of the room. Yeah, it looks good with the light. All right, so I'm going to use my fingers at first, and what I'm doing, can you see? So I'm splitting the seam open. And I'm just running my fingers across it so to make sure that the fabric both ways is pressed open like this. And it's really easy to do because it's along the selvage. This is what makes it super easy. Some people trim it away. Like I said, if it's going to be too dark on this writing, even though it's facing this way towards me, sometimes I can see through. But this doesn't look like it's going to be too big of a problem. All right, so I finger press that, and then I'm going to take the iron to it, and I'm going to steam press it, because I used my fingers for the most of it. And I kind of wiggle it back and forth a little, keeping that seam 100% open. And now I'm going to, oops, I know you guys wiggled just a little. I'm going to now take this side and pull it onto the board all the way to where I wasn't, which is the rest. There's a delay. I know there's a big delay. There always is between here though. Sometimes some people see it right away. Mm. All right, so I'm using my fingers again, separating it. This fabric isn't really that wrinkled, so I don't really absolutely have to press it. Um, I usually do, but I don't absolutely have to. But I'm going to because I'm going to flip this over anyway. Right. 
Now I'm going to find, by putting all this down there, I'm going to find that next seam. I'm going to drop that off the board. This is the cool part about having such a big board. So I only have two seams to press. Because this is my side to side. So this should be wide enough. All right. All right, so I'm gonna use my hands to open it a little. Okay, open the seam up like this. And I'm gonna run my fingers down it. It doesn't even matter if you have fingernails or not because all you're doing is splitting the seam open like this. And I always do this because it keeps the bulk off of just one side, especially if I'm loading it on the frame where this is going, the side, you know, is going up on the top of the frame. You know, I would have too much bulk on that one side, creating like a weird um, lip on the long arm. So this is why I press these open. Now, smaller quilts, I really don't need to because I just press the seam whichever way the seam goes. But big quilts like this with big backings, I press like this. All right, now I'm going to pull this this way now. Now that other end is up there. Again, splitting it open, making sure everything's nice. And running my finger down it just to open it up. I always, always press from the seam side first. Can I have a seam ripper real quick? Because I so Yeah, down. yeah, I can hand it to you. I know what it is. I actually know what that is. Can you guys believe Scotty was in here helping me today? I help you CJ as often as I can. You make it sound like I never do. Well, that. no, I meant like passing me things and learning things. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. He will get behind the sewing machine. <laughs> okay, let's do this again. Open. Oops, there's a little wrinkle right there. Get that out of there. Okay, now I should be able to, see that didn't line anything up. It just looked like it was going to. It really don't matter though, because it is very busy, like I said. I'm gonna take this whole thing up now, and I'm just gonna give it a quick press on the whole entire thing, just to get rid of the creases and so on and so forth. And actually, I could at least tip the camera up so you guys can see my face while I'm pressing because now it's not important to see that I'm splitting seams. I'm just going to get these creases out because that's one thing I don't want is that, like the fold from the being on the bolt. Well, I like it. I just know it's dark. It was a gift from one of my subscribers, remember? I know. I forgot about it. So I just saw it now. That is an awesome shirt. I always come up one side and then go down the other, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to do as much as I can fit on the ironing board. That's how I press big, huge quilts, too. <laughs> Now see, I'm going over that seam. I can kind of see just a little bit of the that light? salvage, but oh, I got a piece of it that fell down. 
You want to pick it up? You need help? Hold on. Well, I can pick it up and no. pull it out. Hold on. I'm just fiddling with my fingers. There we go. Aha! What is all this on your stand? It's from the water. Oh, because we have such hard water, huh? Yep. I know the iron is already making a mess on my the tray that it goes on. Our water in this town is so so harsh on things. All right, drop this down there. there. It's all I drink. I wonder what it does to that. You got probably absorbs all fine. the calcium that's in the water. We have a lot of calcium in our water. No, no, I feel fine. Healthy for me. I'm not going to be trimming this up, by the way. For those that are curious, I'm just pressing it. And I'll load it on the frame as is. No, no one's saying much. I'm going to put all this stuff away. Damn, that's what I want. Okay. Let me know if you need anything. I don't need anything. Well, I know. Hi, guys. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. It's already been an hour and 16 minutes. Took my sweet time. like I need more water inside this canister. And yes, even though this is nasty water that we have here, I still keep putting it in my irons. You know, because I like steam. <laughs> and the other way to get steam is with the water. Look at that. Beautiful steam. <laughs> do you like the cordless? Yes, I do. I do, I do. Earlier I tested the um, limits while I was making that other quote top. I was testing the limits of how long it can stay off and stay warm. And um, it was about a minute and 45 seconds. And then it starts cooling itself down. Because I was using... I'll show you right now. I was using this rubber thing. A lot of people have this. You put high, hot iron on it. And I would press real quick like this. And because I was dealing with blocks, you know, I needed to, instead of, because I'm right-handed and I have this on my left-handed side, I was just sticking it on this right here. And then I'd pick it up when the next block was ready to press. And then I'd stick it back on this thing. You know, I was just doing that over and over because I'm right-handed, so I had it on this side. I was pressing this way, and I kept putting it down this way. And I had the unit up here, but instead of putting it back on the unit itself, I was just um, using this thingy. The only thing about this thingy is because dust gets on it, because I don't use it often, it starts stinking when the iron... Um, stinks up the dust so definitely make sure that your iron mats see all that dust don't have dust on them obviously i can take it to the kitchen and rinse it off in the sink but yeah it's just about a minute and 45 seconds off of it and it was good so that's not that bad before it starts cooling down Okay, now to press the other half. So now I just go back the other way. So I pull it this way towards me. And then I press this side now, pull it down, pull it down as I press. So it makes it really easy. That's why I like having a big ironing board. 
kind of glad I didn't turn the baby um, changing table into an ironing board because I don't think I would have had as much workspace as I do with this one. So that's a plus. And he took off and he can't read comments and I see them popping up. Night, Lisa. Uh, let's see, Scott. Now you hope Tiff. Okay. I put bottled water in my eyes. So we can't afford that. So I use distilled. Can't afford it. Uh, my husband is always making suggestions for whatever I'm making. A lot of times they're very useful. Also does quality control on my... Mine doesn't do that really. He just comes in and says, oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's cute. Oh, I like that. Oh, that looks nice. You know. That's his, but he doesn't know really what to say because he doesn't make them. Yes, we are very real. Very real. This is like my real life, guys. <laughs> and now that I can take you around the room and around the house, you guys get to see more of my, you know, life and things in it and whatnot because I can actually mobily get up and go somewhere else if I wanted I mean, I really don't want to take you guys outside and smoke a cigarette kind of thing because that's kind of lame, but um, I can take you outside and show you like sunset, and even though that's already happened, I think, by now, um, and take you outside to see the, the lake and the mountains and real life here. It's a beautiful view from my backyard, that's for sure. And Scott tries to interact as often as he can. I really didn't need much pressing on some of this. It's not really horrible. Only getting those creases out is my main concern. Wow, this thing is laying really flat. That's a first in a while. The last backing I made that needed this much um, fabric was not flat. <laughs> it was like, it kind of started bowing and it was... A disaster. I had to retake in the seam like I had to veer off about a half an inch all the way the rest of the way down. But then I also was sewing on a side that didn't have a selvage for a line. And you guys know me, I don't do straight lines very well. So that's why I leave it on. And if I can help it, I leave it on. And if I have to cut it off because of see throughness, I'll cut it off after I sew it. And I'll just change the um the distance that I sew away from the salvage. Since this one was left on, I sewed a quarter inch away from the salvage line. If the if I knew that it was going to be see-through enough to cut it off, I would have sewed a half an inch away and tried to stay consistent. I have a problem with veering when I do that though. And I'm pretty sure we all honestly do. Almost done. Sure took me a while tonight. Come on. The salvage is trying to fold underneath. Which is annoying, actually. <laughs> it created a pucker right here. So if I can get it flat, then the pucker will come out and I won't have to quote that in. Oh, another thing that's been asked of me before, and I'll answer it again since that video is probably a really long time ago, is the, sh the shrinkage. Now, this is not pre-washed fabric. So, because it's not been pre-washed, the shrinkage is going to happen, which always does on cotton. So, it's usually about three to seven, it depends, three to seven percent shrinkage usually happens when you wash a quilt after it's been quilted if you didn't pre-wash your fabric. So the question that I have been asked and I've answered this before is what happens when you leave the selvage on and you wash your quilt? Will your back quilt, your back of your quilt shrink at the same rate as the front of your quilt? And the answer is yes, it will. Now, if you leave the selvage on um, if you didn't load this or quilt this tight enough, if you didn't load it on a frame 
a certain way and you had puckering in your quilting anyway because it wasn't loaded correctly and some more puckered around the joints that you can you know combined the pieces of fabric you can get the the shrinkage of the fabric to be smaller than the shrinkage of the um selvage that you have left inside the quilt um and you'll see it, it kind of like it kind of creates like a selvage would not shrink because it doesn't and it kind of creates just a small little area where you can tell if that quilting didn't hit it just right or something and the way it washes it'll create like a little suck in and you can see behind it and it'll wave the um if you didn't press it really well especially you'll get a wave because i've had that before when i first started quilting and i was like why is that happening you know but we wash in cold and we don't get much shrinkage and I use polyester blended batting so I don't get as much shrinkage that way either. I don't really pre-wash fabrics though. Um, I don't see no need to pre-wash honestly because the whole quilt gets washed when I'm done. Whether I've pre-washed the fabric or not, it gets washed when I'm done because I drag it around and do this and do that and it gets dirty. So there's no point in washing the fabric to get it dirty in the room while I'm putting it together to have to wash it again. So yeah, um, I don't really pre-wash, but that selvage sometimes, since it doesn't shrink, sometimes it'll shrink on your, the fabric itself. And you'll have just this weird, like coupling looking thing. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's bigger on the, the selvage and smaller, you know, at the seam. So, but I did a really tight stitch so it shouldn't do it at all. It should evenly shrink with my nice tight stitch. If I would have done a looser stitch, that's probably why I didn't learn it back in the day. If I would have done a looser stitch, then I would have had different shrinking rates, but it's tight, so it shouldn't have any kind of like coupling or whatever that word is that I'm looking for when it shrinks. All right, I think this is the last of it. Yep, this is the last of it. And then I can talk for a minute and then I can get off of here and go eat some food because I haven't done that yet. My so Sundays have actually been getting in, in the way of me having my food <laughs> on Sundays of my dinner time. I uh, get up, you know, uh, if I do take a nap, it's always like right before four. And sometimes if I don't, then I'm okay. But when I do take a nap, I usually get right up and eat. But today I did not do that. Today I just got up and came here with you guys. Okay. So there is that done. And we're going to put this over here, read some comments. I'll um, bring this over here so you can see. I got to turn that light off. Read some comments. Bottled water, distilled water. Okay, there it was. Uh, it was right there. Suggestions. Okay. Brings me something to eat or drink when I'm sewing. Mine asks, but I don't really like to eat in here. Especially when I'm on camera. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it would keep him over 30 years ago. Um, I knew you were my kind of gal when you hit your hip on the table and you said that for I your pain laughed. But sometimes saying it does make the pain more bearable. You know, I've only hit my hip once on the table during a live stream. But when I'm not live streaming, uh, my hip and the table, like, that's the same thing. I hit it all the time and filthy words <sighs> come out can't help it yeah right April 24th he's still here God willing oh well that's sweet Teresa and I'm glad he's still there with you all right so here's me some big huge backing I would test it with the quilt by laying it on the floor and see if I have it correct, but it seems big enough. <laughs> it should be. Uh, sometimes I'll lay it on the floor and lay the quilt on it. So from here, you can't tell that there's a seam, right? 
I don't really see it. Not looking into the camera, but when I come up close, I mean, it's because it's busy, but see, you can see it. Some of it's lining up and some of it is not. So, I mean, it sort of blends. It blends pretty darn good for being a seam. So you can see that is the seam. It blends pretty darn good just because it's really, really busy and filled with, you know, stuff print. So there's the other seam. This one did not line up at all. But it still doesn't, I mean, from this far, it's so busy, you can't see it. You know, but you can see the selvage behind it. I didn't really think we were gonna, but you can. You see that? I see it when I step back, you could see the selvage. I'm wondering if I can't see the writing. I mean, I don't think I can. That's the reason why I cut it off usually is because of seeing the writing. I'm not seeing it when I hold my hand, which is going to be covered. So I think it'll be good. Yeah, I should be good. From here, though, it's hard to, t it's hard to say from here because when I look in the camera, it looks like you could still see the white from the salvage, but it's also kind of depending on how I hold it. All right. So I'm going to grab this end and I'm going to grab this end and I'm going to put them together because this should be my width, right? No, this should be my length. <gasps> Maybe that's not my length. That's my length. This is my width. Yep, definitely my width. So that is very long that way. Times four. Whatever this number is times four is how much I have. So 32 and a half times four. Let me go to my calculator and put you guys where I can talk. 32 and a half times four. Where's the calculator on this thing? Am I blind? Oh, there it is. Some of you guys are like, you don't need a calculator. That's easy numbers. 130 inches. So my length is 130 inches. All right. And my width is hopefully good. Yeah, that looks like 80, 90 something. I'm folding it while I work this. Okay. And my width is hopefully on track as well. And I'm just going to do it this way because I don't feel like trying to fold that in four. It's 104. So I have 104 by 130. So I just made one weight backing pretty much. So that is complete. All right. Oh, come on. Come on. It has to reload my video for me to see comments. It, like, kicked me off. How retarded. I just went out to a calculator. All right, comments. Come back up. My comments are missing, guys. Oh, there they are. Uh, 120, 130, okay. You guys were doing the math. <laughs> okay. I can do math if the number is 52 plus 52, but I cannot do the math if it's 36 or 45 times 4, 3, 2, you know, you know what I mean? I, I just, I think about it and I just cannot do it. <clears throat> I celebrated our 30th, 70th. 17 days before his death. Oh, Kim, so sorry. All right. What else do I have? Oh, I'll show you the quilt that I'll be quilting. How's that? For those of you who are new and did not see my time lapse video, I'm going to kind of just give a quarter of this because I 
really honestly cannot show more than a quarter of the quilt because it is so big. I have to open it anyway, so. That's whatever I can hold up. How about that? My arm span. So this is this. It's my churn dash quilt. So that's what I'm going to be quilting. And this is like the perfect backing for it. Here, let me just lay it up here. Bring the camera over to it. See? Because it's busy flowers. And there's lots of flowers on the quilt tuck. Busy flower back. And it's pinks with the blues and the greens. And look. Pink, blue, green. <laughs> And I lost you guys for two seconds. Just refresh your screen if you don't realize that I'm not unrefreshed. Okay. Anyway, now that that just happened, I think I'm going to let you guys go. Um... So yeah, that is my churn dash quilt. It is finally going to get quilted and I'm just going to quilt it with white thread. Um, yeah, just white. I mean, I have an off white I could probably use, but that is a really, really white. Um, a really, hi Teresa. It is really, really white with white polka dot um, fabric. So um, I could also use a pink. I don't mind a pink on a white, um, but I don't have like a, a light blush pink. Um, especially on the back, a, a blush pink would look good on the back. I might just have to, I don't even know if the quilt shop is open. I forgot to ask if they're still open during these times. Huh. I'll have to find out because <laughs> it's the only place I buy my glide thread for the long arm because I don't, I, I'm 100% sure I don't have a pink. I have a light purple. But I don't, I mean, I don't think a light purple will really go with that. Oh, it's okay, Teresa. No big deal. All right, guys. Well, it's been now an hour and 30 minutes plus. Huh? Mine has door pickup. Oh. Hmm. My sweet mom. My mom joined my mom. 5th of May is not a good day. Hmm. Can't wait to see what you're doing next. Oh, and also, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to quilt this in a live feed. Um, I'm actually one, I, I wanted to do um, like a flower stitch out or flower uh, with uh, feathers, like a flowery feather or swirl feather or something. Uh, but I, I never decide until I get it to the long arm and also the whole not knowing if I have like a pink or a blush thread which I, I'm pretty sure I don't um, so I don't know what I'm quilting on it yet <laughs> uh, if I don't make up my mind I'm actually just going to quickly quilt it by doing an all over meander but a big all over meander not a really tight one like I usually do because I tend to heavy heavily quilt um, and I got to keep training my brain to say oh let's take that up you know an inch bigger <laughs> in distance type thing. So I'm learning. Reconnecting. It's it's actually more expensive on the, online. I always buy it at the shop because it's cheaper. All right. Well, everybody, I hope I got all of your questions and you guys enjoyed um, watching. <laughs> Maybe make some backing for a big quilt. So anyway thank you guys for watching if you're new to my channel head down that way hit that subscribe button it's red so subscribe there is a bell hit that little dingling bell it'll go beep beep and it will uh allow you to choose how you want your notifications to come in as well as like like these videos and share them with your friends you know and i will see you guys next time i'm on which i want that will be because well, you'll probably be on tomorrow. I'll probably be on tomorrow. <laughs> That's what Scott says. He's behind me talking. <laughs> anyway, see you guys next time. Bye.